The Agricultural Business Chamber is commending President Cyril Ramaphosa for the pragmatic approach of his State of the Nation address. The Chamber says it's excited to collaborate on inclusive growth and job creation. To tell us more, Agbiz CEO Theo Bosov joins us now. Thank you very much, Mr. Bosov, for your time. So many South Africans seem disillusioned by repeated promises in the face of inaction. Um, Yet Agbiz has lauded President Cyril Ramaphosa's pragmatic approach. Does that mean you expect to see um, promises made real through action? Well, we certainly hope so, yes. Um, a, a, lot of the, a lot of what the President mentioned is already taking place behind the scenes, especially in terms of with the state that enterprises and certain governments collaborating with private sector to look at public-private partnerships to try and improve some of the um, service delivery towards businesses for critical um, critical services such as for instance logistics and, and, and port operations. I do think it is necessary though to, to be realistic in terms of the time frames um, that, you know, and, and when you can expect improvements to take place. Um, it, it is a complicated process. Uh, there's resources required. There's a lot of red tape that still needs to be removed. And I think that was or mention was made of that in, in, in this in the SONA. Uh, so we're certainly looking forward to seeing that. And I mean, we, we've got a long list in terms of um, unnecessary uh, re regulations that perhaps should be reviewed. But I do think one of the challenges is that even though this promise is made on sort of a national level, and we certainly hope it will be cascaded down. Uh, both to other government departments as well as provinces and municipalities. Unfortunately, a lot of the service delivery challenges are not necessarily linked to national government, but, but especially to local government. And that's where the, predominantly um, a lot of the agribusinesses operate. So energy security, um, investment in port infrastructure and value chain, especially transport uh, support, are critical. Um, you're saying these need to filter down from a national level to a more local uh, municipal level. How do you want to see that happening in practice for that to have a marked improvement um, on the value chain and the ability of agricultural businesses to sustain themselves and to grow inclusively? I think if you can, if you can focus on the logistics infrastructure, especially railways and at the ports, uh, I mean, for the agricultural sector, you know, 52% of, of the of agricultural products in terms of the value, not necessarily the bulk or the, or the gross thereof, is exported. So it's a significant um, foreign revenue earner. You know, and, and, and these are also the commodities that are quite labor intensive. So a lot of the growth in, this, in the South African agribusiness industry will come through export. But unfortunately, there are some serious challenges trying to get perishable products out of the country through the ports, um, as well as getting it into the ports where some of the roads are, are severely congested. So if one can see public-private partnerships in terms of third-party operators either at the ports or, or at the very least on the rail sidings that lead into the ports, we do know that um, uh, accessing the ports on rail is, is often a um, slightly easier or, or better option than road because, because of congestion challenges and you have general freight that, and trucks that are backed up you know, for kilometers trying to enter the port. So collaborating in that aspect, I think that, that is certainly something one will want to see with the private sector. There are certain challenges, though, that I think government will have to address itself. Um, Large-scale infrastructure, into cranes, for instance, at the at the port. You know, the agricultural sector or, or no business sector individually will necessarily be able to, to step into that in, into that mold, and it's, it's not the uh, primary business. So I think certainly uh, almost an action plan needs to be developed, and I think the president did allude to that in terms of what this what the state can do, what state that enterprises should do and where private sector can collaborate. So our, our interpretation, at least, is whilst I mean, you're correct in saying we, we lauded the spirit of it, there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, the mere fact that there's an acknowledgement, I think, of some of the limitations and an invitation to work together is, is a good first step. But it's by no means, you know, we're expecting after the speech, you know, everything to, to be hunky-dory and everything to change overnight. There's a significant amount of work that needs to be done. And, and realistically, I think it will probably take at least five years or so to, to turn the situation around where um, a lot of the challenges are with logistics. Energy security, I think, is also a slightly different one. This doesn't only affect the agricultural sector. It affects uh, the entire economy. But some of the legislative changes and regulatory changes that have already been made have been positive. I mean, moving the exemption for an en energy generation license from one megawatt to 100 megawatt has at least allowed some of the agribusinesses to generate their own energy, very often renewable energy, which is also good for the just transition and, and lowering of, of carbon footprint. Uh, so some of it has already taken place, and I think getting an enabling environment um, 
to promote the, this, this, the, these sort of actions to almost become self-sufficient, if I can put it that way, in some of the, the deep rural areas with perhaps service delivery uh, and the, you know, such as logistics and, and energy security is, is unfortunately not the reality for many dairy businesses. Mm. Agriculture holds immense potential uh, to unlock economic growth, but developing black farmers needs to be a much stronger priority, um, especially with a focus on adequate capacitation. You can't just develop farmers um, and then leave them uncapacitated to carry on their own. That's not sustainable. Um, how can government do better in this regard? A lot of discussions have been taking place um, over a number of years, and uh, I think one would be perhaps underestimate the the potential skills and the desire that's out there for, for black farmers, especially to enter into the sector. The biggest challenge, though, and this is unfortunately a sort of a, a systemic uh, barrier to entry, is finance. Accessing finance is a significant challenge because the vast majority of black farmers in South Africa, unfortunately, don't own their land. The other is they, um, although there, there are notable exceptions, of course, where, um, you know, black commercial farmers have purchased the property through their own means but generally speaking through the land reform program of the state it's it's leasehold or even even short-term arrangements uh, to occupy the land and that's not really conducive to accessing finance so we have been working on what's what's called the blended finance model so that's mixing a, a government grant portion with commercial loan financing to try to give access to to soft finance or concessionary finance to black farmers specifically to enter into the sector but unfortunately, that is being being done almost to plaster over the underlying challenge, which, which is that there's no collateral value for the vast majority of black farmers because they don't necessarily own the land that, that, that they occupy. So if, um, if the focus was, I think, as the president was saying, on, on having a regulatory environment and legislation and, red, and removing the red tape for, for inclusive economic growth, I think the property rights or extending property rights to black South Africans through the land reform program would be the number one uh, way to do so, and, and I think it would, it's relatively fiscal neutral, and if that can take place, um, I, I think the sector and, and government will be quite surprised in terms of the potential and how quickly transformation will take place within the primary sector. Mm. Land reform was also a key point in the President's State of the Nation address. Uh, it's still a thorny issue among South Africans in general, especially amongst the agricultural community. Uh, what active progress does AgBiz and its members hope to see this coming year? Well, one of the initiatives that the President did announce, uh, it was previously announced as well, but we understand that there's been some progress made towards concretizing this proposal is the, the the land reform agency or land redistribution agency uh, one of the challenges so far in the land reform program is that it has been bogged down by quite a lot of uh, red tape and bureaucracy functioning within the department and we have the land restitution process for instance which is already being driven by the, the restitution commission which is essentially a state entity that falls this uh, to an extent an arm's length away from a government department moving land redistribution which is the program that is supposed to deliver the most land for land reform and, and transfer land to um, you know, aspirant uh, black farmers. I think moving that into an agency approach where it is slightly less bureaucratic and maybe less constrained by uh, legislation such as the Public Finance Management Act that might inhibit government from moving as quickly perhaps as, a, as an agency could. So I think that is quite an, quite an exciting um, uh, quite an exciting aspect that was announced and when we certainly hope that, that that gets put into action and gets implemented this year that this agency is established the other one related to land reform and i think is quite significant that was mentioned as well as the expropriation bill now it is it's very contentious as you mentioned it's a thorny issue for um you know for the agricultural sector but generally speaking the, the state hasn't utilized its powers of expropriation the existing powers of expropriation for land reform to date uh, the expropriation bill has has been in the making since at least 2013, the latest version at least, or you know, at least since 2013. So it's now finally progressing through Parliament. So that is one option that the state also does have to accelerate land, land reform. But the, where the thorny issue comes in is the issue of null compensation, where the, where the bill does provide potentially that in certain instances where the circumstances justify it, no compensation will be paid where, where the state does expropriate land for land reform. So whether that exact is, is necessary, I think, is a huge debate and one that hasn't necessarily been, um, been had 
with any sort of reason in the in the public domain as, as it's been very emotional but the expropriation with compensation hasn't fully been utilized so that is another avenue i think that, that, that can be looked at and the expropriation bill does make provision for compensation um, in most circumstances well thank you very much uh, for your time and for speaking to us that was agba's ceo theo bossov